Am I the a-hole for telling my boyfriend I wasn't donating part of my liver to him? My boyfriend, 31 male, in the past had a binge drinking problem before we met. By the time we met, he had been sober for years. But he had cirrhosis on his liver that doesn't look to be getting better. It had some really bad lab results. He also had an embolism in his lungs, so had reduced his lung function and diabetes. I went to a liver specialist to mention that my boyfriend might need a liver transplant in the future, and he came back pretty bummed about that, understandably. He then, not seriously, but kind of hopefully let me know that I should donate part of my liver to him if we matched. I told him no, and I was kind of shocked he would ask. We've been dating eight months, and while I like him, I'm not convinced he is the one yet. He has a lot of qualities I like. But some that drive me up the wall including having poor personal hygiene and not looking after his diet and eating mostly fast food, which probably caused the diabetes. He was surprised, and then tried to cover it up saying he didn't expect it and was just joking. I felt like he was serious, but didn't want to seem that way and told him I would only think about doing something so personal for a parent, sibling, or spouse, and only if we were in good terms. Then he joked that he could just ask me to marry him to get my liver. And I told him now that he's mentioned it, it would make any marriage proposal seem disingenuous, so I wouldn't get matched to see if I was a candidate beforehand. He got serious and told me the liver isn't a big transplant and I would still be able to keep part of my liver. I told him it doesn't matter that the liver regenerates. I wouldn't even think about doing it for just a boyfriend. He got offended and said he would do it for me if the situation was reversed. But I said the problem is the situation isn't reversed, so I'm not convinced he would just because he's spouting platitudes. He got really angry and stormed out and hasn't been back in hours. Am I the a-hole for being overly honest with him that I wouldn't donate and liver for him? Now for the top comments. This is a bad sign. And more than just this one level. A big part of recovery is taking responsibility for your past. He doesn't appear to be doing that if he's expecting your help, even if he framed it as a joke. Eight months is way too short of a time for him to have the impression you'd be willing to donate one of your organs particularly when the need for it stems from his past addiction struggles. I think your instincts might be correct. He's not the one. You and your liver should run, not stay whole. If Opie wanted, she could get tested and let the doctor know she doesn't want to donate if a match and the doctor will just say not a match. But honestly, just throw away the whole man who wants to make I was just joking, but treats you as if it were serious jokes. It ties into what the above comment was saying that recovery means taking responsibility for your past. Jokes like that show the kind of person who wants to do whatever but face zero consequences. Not stay whole. Not stay whole. No one, and I can't believe I have to say this, is entitled to your liver. Dear Lord, it's your literal organ and you can do whatever you want with it. We've seen gold diggers and now we see a liver digger not stay home. It seems like from your message, you already know deep down that he's not the one. Even if he was the one, I wouldn't do it for a boyfriend. I might do it for a spouse because at that point we are married, but that's just me. OP, you're absolutely right. He has also ruined any future proposal with his comments too, as it will also come across as disingenuous and conniving. He definitely wasn't joking considering he kept pushing the subject after you said no. You're so unbelievably not the a-hole. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for deeply insulting my mom's boyfriend's son at a family event because I thought something he said was a little misogynistic? We had a little garden party a few days ago at my mom's long-term partner's, John, weekend house. His older son, Charles, was also there. Charles is 32, lives with his mother, unemployed, and maybe worked a total of one year in his entire life if we add up the bits. He doesn't have any mental or physical disabilities, and he has a degree in computer science. He is just lazy and always brings up excuses for why he doesn't have a job. Charles spends his days playing video games, taking care of his two dogs, his newest excuse to why he can't work. And he keeps his mom's apartment clean, does their laundry, and he thinks that's enough contribution. 
His younger brother also lives with them because if he moved out, he would have to stop financially contributing. And their mom couldn't afford to feed, slash clothes, slash etc. Charles and herself anymore. I think it's fair to say that Charles is a leech. At one point in the conversations, Charles was asked if he is dating anyone, slash goes on dates. He replied, nah, I'm not interested. Those S-words are not good for anything. They only want my money. I'm not going to let myself be used by anyone. Well, I really didn't like how he referred to women as S-words. And I found it ridiculous that he was afraid of women wanting his money, as he doesn't have any and mooches off of his mother and brother. So I laughed at his face and asked him, what money? That he is just a useless, broke loser who is using his poor mother, leeching off of her, and he provides no value to the world. He is a burden on everyone around him. He just said that he contributes more than enough, that I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, and that his mother owes him a lot than left. I'm not going to say that I feel bad about Charles, because I don't. But John looked so sad and devastated, and I kind of ruined a party. John is a great guy, and I feel bad for him. I know he blames himself for Charles. Am I the a-hole for insulting John's son in front of John? Do I owe John an apology? Not day home. John is sad because he knows what you said is true. Charles is what makes him upset, not you. But if you want to talk to him about it, I think that would be okay. Maybe start by apologizing for allowing yourself to get drawn into an argument at a party, because that is a legitimate thing to apologize for. I hope he could have stopped at what money? It was John's party and Opie should apologize. Being right also means handling it effectively not just spewing words. There's also a bunch of other better words to use for women than S words, so it looks like everyone made choices that day. If Charles had used the N word or said something about gay people, not a single person here would find that Opie out of place. But misogyny is so ingrained, it doesn't have the same impact. He deserves to be called out, shamed and ridiculed. If Opie had addressed the misogyny, that would be different. She didn't. None of what she said addressed how he spoke of women. It was all personal insults. Nothing she said is going to make him rethink anything. She said his life provides no value, but her tirade provided no value to the Kasha claim to be fighting for her. I really feel like this is objectively and everyone sucks here, but I'm going with my gut and giving you an odd day home. You are 100% correct for calling out the disgusting comments and spoke the truth to put the child in his place. But you probably violated time, place, and manner in how you went about it. He certainly has it coming, and could probably benefit from being called out on his situation. Apologize to John, but explain why you blew up. Yo, Charles, nothing. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not letting my dad's girlfriend force me to keep kosher? Alright, so my 16 female dad has been dating this new woman, Natalie, for around 3 years now. She's fine or whatever. I don't really talk to her much, but she's always been nice to me, except for being extremely weird about her kitchen. For reference, Natalie is Jewish and me and my dad are not. Natalie keeps kosher very strictly, which for people who don't know, meaning she won't even eat off plates that have touched non-kosher food, eat at non-kosher restaurants or even in our houses is not kosher. There's a lot of other rules, but it would take me forever to list them all. All you have to know is she's strict about her food. And even though she's never tried to force this on me or my dad, and we don't care that she doesn't eat out slash in our house, I'm getting annoyed at how anal retentive she is about her apartment. If you visit her, she asks that you not bring non-kosher food and let her cook for you. She's a great cook and always makes sure we have something to eat. But sometimes I want to eat bacon or shrimp or something. And I think it's weird to tell your underage guest they can't do that in your house even if they don't use your utensils. On to the conflict. Basically, I bought a cheeseburger with a side of popcorn shrimp on my way to her apartment, since my dad and I are staying the night. I didn't feel like eating it in the car or at the restaurant because it's weird to eat by yourself, so I brought it inside. I used one of Natalie's plates to set the food on, cause I guess I didn't just want to eat out of the bag. I don't know. But anyway, she saw me and my dad started freaking out on me about how could I disrespect her like this. Natalie went into her room, 
but like at the end of the day, I feel like she's over twice my age and getting mad at a child for being hungry. Plus, I was going to wash the plate she literally never would have known. So I feel like she's just being weird and strict to feel different. Am I the a-hole? Now for the comments. Look, dude, I get it. I've been an atheist just about all my life. And for the most of that time, I thought religion was pretty silly. I still don't have faith. But I've come to learn that if folks need structure to their spirituality, who am I to criticize as long as it's not harming anyone? More to the point, these kosher rules, which may seem like nonsense to you and me, are clearly very deeply important to Natalie. It was communicated to you how important they are to her and how seriously she takes them. And you absolutely, 100% disrespected Natalie's deeply held beliefs in her own home. If she was coming over to your house and forcing you to be kosher or whatever, I'd be on your side 100%. But in this case, you're the a-hole. Yeah, basically came to say the same. She has not pushed her beliefs on you. She's being respectful to you and your dad when she's at your place, so return that favor. You were fully aware of how she is and how strongly she practices her beliefs. And you just didn't give a damn. You're the a-hole. Me too. Her home, her rules. Abstaining from pork and shellfish during those periods doesn't harm you. You're the a-hole, and because this can't be emphasized enough, her home, her rules. You're the a-hole. First of all, stop pretending you were just a hungry child. A cheeseburger with a side of popcorn shrimp? You literally ordered the two least kosher things you could think of in a combination that almost no one orders. It is her house. You don't live there. And there are so many options available to you to eat and still respect your religion. Or you could have eaten at a car, but you didn't feel like it. You're being a brat, and you know it. You're acting like this is some strange set of rules she's made up out of nothing just to mess with you. Which, even if it were so, she should be respected in her home. But it's a fairly well-known set of rules practiced by major faith. Take time to reflect on why you are so bothered about how this woman runs her home in which you do not live. Apologize and buy her a new plate. Also, didn't feel like eating out of the container so she had to use a plate. Containers would still be rude to do in a kosher home without explicit permission anyways. But at least it's not unkoshering someone's dishes. I know Jews who keep a kosher kitchen but are cool with non-kosher food and paper plates or in areas outside their main kitchen, like using a kitchenette in an entertainment space or eating in the living room, etc. This just sounds like a deliberate slap in the face to Natalie and her beliefs. Also, the statement that they intended to wash up and put the unkoshered plate back without Natalie knowing? I do not know where to start with the lack of ethics that implies. Like, I am not Jewish, and I cannot imagine doing this to my worst enemy. Last story is titled, Am I the a-hole for no longer giving an employee discount to someone who quit working for me? I know the title sounds ridiculous. If you don't work somewhere, you are not an employee. And as such, you do not qualify for an employee discount there. But hear me out. It's more complicated than that. And I just might be the a-hole here. I own a company that has several diverse revenue streams. We own a real estate, we own restaurants, we own a vape shop, and we own several convenience stores slash gas stations. I offer every employee of my company 20% reduced rent if they choose to rent one of my properties. So, if you're a vape shop employee and your rent is supposed to be $1,000, it's $800. One of my employees, Valerie, recently decided that she needed to focus on school and she would no longer be able to keep her part-time job at my store. Her rent is supposed to be $600, but with a 20% less, she's been paying $480 a month for the past two years. After she quit, she paid us the normal $480 that she had been paying as an employee. I had my property manager send her a letter letting her know that she was short $120 and that she had a 30-day grace period to make up the difference before I would add late fees. Her mom sent me an angry email saying that it's not fair for me to punish her daughter for having poor mental health and being unable to hold down a job while going to school. On the one hand, I feel like I'm not the a-hole because I'm sticking to the contract we signed. 
On the other hand, I kind of feel like I am the a-hole because that $120 per month isn't gonna make or break me. But on the other hand, if I give her the discount even though she's not my employee, I would feel morally obligated to reduce all of my rents by 20%. And as such, I would no longer be making a profit at all by renting these places out. Please note, if your answer is, you're the a-hole because all landlords are bad, I am going to completely ignore your comment. Might as well not waste your time. Nothing is as black and white as you are pretending life is. Not the a-hole. Landlords aren't obligated to have mental health clauses in their rental agreements. Valerie signed a rental agreement and is responsible for knowing the terms of the agreement. Having her mother email you is ridiculous. Kind of feel better about my decision with the first three comments all being unanimous. I guess the guilt trip her mom laid on me was working a bit too well. Just the fact her mom and not her mailed you is reason enough in my opinion. Not stay home. You're not punishing her as her mother claims. When she was working for you, she was essentially earning credit towards her rent. Now that she is not working for you, she no longer earns that credit. Also, what business does her mother have in this? Is mom want a lease? You and Valerie sign a contract. Unless mom has taken over her finances or something, she has nothing to do with this. Nah, she's not even in the same state we are. I think she complained to her mom that her mom went full mama bear. Your rental discount for employees are really quite generous. And so long as the contract is clear about the terms, then not a home. As you said, once you start doing favors, then everyone will take advantage. I think you're legally in the clear, but maybe draft a letter for employees in the future. When they quit, reminding them the rent will change as of specific date. Not day home. You give discounts as a thank you for good service and for working for you. She does not work for you, so you have no obligation to give her the discount. A bit of notice would have been nice, as she probably didn't think about it. But yeah, don't give her 20% off because then other employees would feel hard done by. I agree. It would have been nice if she had given notice that she was quitting. Then we could have possibly worked something out. Lol, your reply made me giggle. I have a small company with six employees and quitting on a spot really screws me over. Had one quit the day before I left on vacation and almost ruined it. 